Greetings happy coders, welcome to a new video and hopefully a new setup with a much better microphone. I've made about 40 or 50 videos, mostly about AGD and I had a lot of problems with the microphone, had to speak really close to the microphone and even then it wasn't great, um, but I think I've managed to fix it now which is fantastic, so I hope you can hear me clearly. And uh, as a result, of course, I've realized, playing back and listening, that there's a bit more noise in uh, this, uh, this apartment than I thought there was. So uh, I've uh, also got a little background noise generator running, making sort of ambient music. So I hope you like that too. That's from a, a website called mynoise.net. And uh, if you live in a flat like I do and you've got uh, noisy neighbors or kids next door or whatever, I cannot recommend it highly enough. It generates uh, all kinds of different sounds that you can listen to and um, it blanks out noise and uh, so on and it's fantastic and I'm not sponsored by them at all. It's absolutely free. It's just uh, really useful if uh, if you have an issue with that like I do. Anyway, let's get on. So uh, yeah, this new stuff, uh, I'm planning on doing a few videos just telling you things I've been up to and what I've been coding not really tutorials at this point, I might do some of those in the future, but uh, I'm just going to basically ramble a little bit, show you some of the stuff I've been working on, and uh, maybe do that perhaps once a week, I don't know, we'll see. So yeah, it's all pretty improvised, not uh, massively edited, and uh, yeah, so here's the, uh, here's the old 48k running on uh, emulator, I'm using Fuse at the moment, and uh, if I just... Uh, Load the virtual tape. Okay, so that's quite a racket, isn't it? But um, the original Manic Miner had a similar sort of uh, dissonant sound, which wasn't particularly pleasant, so I thought it was appropriate. Uh, some of you might just about recognize that as being taken from uh, Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin. The reason for that is that uh, the in-game tune, as you will hear, is also uh, Led Zeppelin. Perils of Willy, of course, is a game which uh, was originally on the VIC-20. And I'll just uh, pause that for a second, just a minute. Let's just... Yeah, we'll just pause that for a second. Uh, yeah, so Perils of Willy was a game originally on the VIC-20. Uh, frankly, it's a pretty awful game. It's very slow, um, not especially playable, but still quite beloved of uh, some people who had a VIC-20 because obviously that was the only Willy they had access to. Okay, and that's the last Willy joke that I'm going to make today. Um, okay, so... I was planning on doing a conversion uh, probably a year, maybe a year and a half ago. Originally, I tried it out on AGD, got the levels running, but it just didn't feel right. You know, the, the character didn't move very well. It's a little bit too fast, a little bit too loose. Didn't have that kind of uh, chunky feel that the original Manic Miner had. So I always thought it'd be a good idea if I could... Uh, convert it using the original Manic Miner engine. And so some of you may have seen recently that I uh, was able to get access to the uh, Manic Miner source code and I've learned a lot about assembly coding in the last year. So I finally got to the point where I felt I was able to do something with it. Uh, made a couple of other mods for Manic Miner, one which is called Manic Miner Shuffle, which is just a very simple mod just a novelty really, it just plays the levels in a different order. That was my first kind of foray into that. And then I made a, uh, another one called Manic Miner Presto, which changed the uh, way that the display was updated to, to make it faster. And it gave a speed control. And again, some of you may have seen that one. Uh, in fact, I have it running just over here. I can show you in a second. I just dragged that over. I think we can just, yeah, there you go. And uh, I have a speed control here, you can see there. That's the maximum speed. We can put the music on as well, I guess.
you can slow it right down. Speed it up to a, about uh, it's about 50% faster, as you can see. This is running um, at uh, just the regular spectrum speed, but it's 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 a good bit faster. And uh, that was a nice little project. Helped me to learn quite a bit more about the way that the game runs. So then I got to thinking, well, perhaps I can um, let me just uh, move this one out of the way. Perhaps I can do something with with Perils of Willy because obviously, um, you know, I knew a little bit more about the the code now and. Uh, so I decided to take a look and um, I'd already been working on a few things with the code, with the way that the uh, sprites were drawn, with the way that the levels were compressed and various things. So it was always in my mind that maybe I could do a conversion using the Manic Miner engine, albeit quite heavily modified. And that was, uh, that was really what I was thinking about doing because it hadn't actually been done before. A few people had spoken about it, but it had never actually been done because it wasn't considered to be realistic primarily because of the way that the screen was laid out the fact that the screen on the Vic was a kind of full screen game and um, it would be slow and it would it just it just wouldn't work but I had realized through the work that I'd done with the AGD version that the screen although it was full screen it was actually stretched so you could limit the size of the screen and uh, with quite a lot of changes to the uh, Manic Miner engine in terms of the display then it, it would become possible and actually if we look at a side-by-side -side view I think I could probably do that now if I put let me just put the level in here just a second so I'm pause that and pause it again so if you take a look I'll what I'll do is I'll just uh, I'll just stretch this across like that and there you should be able to see quite clearly the difference between the two so this is Perils of Willy and this is Manic Miner and Manic Miner is basically running in the top two-thirds of the screen those of you that know about the, the way that the, the spectrum screen works it's in basically three kind of sections each one is about is 2k uh, pixels and then attributes on top so it's running in basically the top two and uh, Therefore, you can basically update this part of the screen only uh, without worrying about this part. And uh, so it's basically updating about 4K of pixels and then plus the attributes, it's about um, 512 bytes. So basically, yeah. Whereas if we take a look at this one, obviously this one we've had to use a much larger part of the screen and in fact I've had to basically create a buffer which uses the entire screen simply because of the way that this updates and the way that uh, things are drawn although this part is not actually being drawn to I'm actually using a buffer which uses the whole screen simply because um, the memory layout allows me to basically uh, when you when you move a step down or when the sprite moves on the screen and so on you have to update the screen so basically the layout is such that you have to use the whole buffer so um, that wouldn't have been possible in the original because um, there wasn't enough memory basically each room uh, takes up about a K and there are 20 rooms so it's about 20 K and then the rest of the memory is used up with the game so uh, there wasn't really any space for the extra kind of uh, sort of 3, 4K maybe that you would need to to, to update the uh, third part of the screen. But fortunately, because of the work I'd already done, I'd already compressed the um, screens. So I'd already saved quite a bit of memory. And of course, uh, this game doesn't use anything like the same number of blocks or, uh, or uh, sprites as the original. And again, in the original each screen had its own dedicated blocks and sprites but I would, I'd already changed that so that we were using a, a bank of blocks and a bank of sprites which meant obviously that when we brought this game over uh, it was much easier to um, to handle so 
having saved that memory, I was then able to put the buffers in and create the, uh, the screen with the size that it is. Obviously, it wasn't as simple as that because I had to then also consider how to update the screen. I had to change the way that the sprites worked. Uh, it also uses some lookup tables which are dedicated to just the top two thirds and the, it, it was pretty extensive but also quite fun to, to finally get it working and so that was basically how that panned out. So as you can see here if I just now unpause it turn that off now. That's Stairway to Heaven and that's in the original Vic version as well although it's a pretty painful version not, not that this one is particularly pleasant either but it's a, it's all part of the fun isn't it. So uh, yeah so as you can see it's running as normal and um, it's, it's basically Manic Miner running uh, but with the levels from Perils of Willy, this is level 17. I'm in uh, a debug mode here, which I've set up, which allows me to basically flip through all of the levels. I guess we'll go through. Most of the levels are done in terms of their layouts. Not all of them have got the enemies yet, but if you look here at level 1, as you can see, I've got the uh, graphics up here. Another thing I had to do was recode the uh, key, the, the collection of the items, because as you can see here, I think there's nine items there. Is it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight items? So basically, I've allowed eight items to to be collectible. In the original, um, it's less than that. I think it's five. I'm not sure, but so I had to update that as well, recode it. The other thing, of course, you can see here are two conveyors. Uh, Manic Manor only allows one conveyor. This game has up to four, so basically had to recode that as well. And uh, I just did my own take on the graphics. I mean, I don't know if you've seen the graphics on the Vic, but they are also, you know, pretty kind of, uh, well, uh, I would call them sort of type-in level graphics. So I'm not saying that my graphics are anything spectacular, but um, I try to kind of give them a bit of a feel from the original Manic Miner, and, uh, which in itself is, I think, a little bit better than the version of the Vic. And these graphics are not 100% finished yet. I may well, uh, I may well adjust them. I'm fairly happy with that balloon, uh, the dog, the animation on the legs is still probably could be improved. But for now, it works and it's fine. So there you go. Let's uh, let's move through and have a little play. Show you a couple of small things. Um, when you collect the notes in the game, it makes a beep. In Manic Miner, it doesn't. So I took the beep from Jet Set Willy. And there it is. And as you can see, incidentally, of course, we do actually have the sprite from Jet Set Willy as well, which is the one that's in. Um, let me go run out of time. It's the one that's in Perils of Willy as well. Now, one of the things that this game has, which doesn't happen at all in Manic Miner, and again, this was a bit of a, a pain to do, uh, I'll show you on this level. As you can see, I've also got infinite lives. That's just part of the debug mode. But if I can just kind of make my way up here, hopefully I can get up to the top and show you. The way that the, um, the jump mechanic works in this game is a little bit different to the jump mechanic in Manic Miner. So normally, when... Um, when the character hits his head on the roof, on the let's say on the wall at the top there, he will basically just fall straight down. But in this game, as you can see, he basically kind of floats with his head just above. And that had to be done, basically in order to enable the game to, uh, to run. So, not even sure if this is completable now, we'll see. Another thing that that game had was a greater fall distance. I think it was almost an infinite fall distance. I decided I didn't want an infinite fall distance because basically that would have made it a little bit too easy. I'm just messing about here now. But, um, 
but it is longer because otherwise the levels would have had to have been quite drastically changed. I didn't want to um, necessarily make it exactly the same as the original. This level is not completable, is it, because of the uh, menu, so uh, because of the melting block, so I'll just have to reset. Which is another thing I've added. Uh, there is a kind of suicide option where you can just kill yourself like that. Start again. It's part of the debug code, but probably put it in the main game. Because you can get trapped. So let's go back through. A bit of trouble here. Yeah. So, easy enough for me to skip the levels and show you a little bit more of the graphics. Yeah, most of the levels were okay. They would play, and they were completable. Not necessarily in the same way, because the mechanics were different. But, um, in the end, I decided that uh, the easiest thing to do was to um, try and keep the original Manic Miner feel and adapt the levels just a little. Usually one or two small cosmetic changes were enough to make the level completable. A lot of them were completable, some of them were easier with the Manic Miner code, some of them were a little more tricky, but in general um, <coughs> didn't have to make that many changes. There were one or two things which um, which were changed, certainly in places where you could get trapped. I mean you can see here for example that you can you can you can definitely get trapped here if you're not careful. Um, you can basically end up being here, and then you're stuck. You can't move. That's well. That's just annoying, isn't it? Really, I wouldn't really want to keep that. So, I may, I may well decide to change that. Although, obviously, if you're here, you'd get trapped anyway. So let's just reset that. Yeah, you just get trapped there. So avoidable, isn't it? Really, the thing to do, I suppose, probably is this, right? There, like that. So you can get away. That's basically nothing more than a, than a trap, so whether I keep that in or not, I'm not sure. Anyway, that's how that works. show you a couple more levels. Uh, had a bit of help here from uh, a, a few uh, chaps who I'd like to give credit to. So a little shout out to... Richard Hallas, who helped with uh, the layouts of the rooms, he helped to uh, to recreate them. I created a tool inside of AGD, which I can probably show you. Actually, why not? Let's. Basically, I made the data so that it was compatible with AGD because I was I'm used to using those tools. And as you can see here, these are the blocks that are in place, and the screens are in here, just a second, <laughs> right, there we go, just running the game and getting a little bit confused. Uh, yeah, there you can see the screens, and they're all in place, and uh, we can use the standard AGD editor, and I just save the data off here, and that goes into the source code, and that runs. So that makes it much easier, of course, to, to work on the levels, and go through them, and uh, I can also use the placement system here, to help me to place the sprites on the screen and uh, John Davis has been helping me with that. Basically um, we put the sprites in here and then I use a, a Google document which converts the coordinates into uh, source code which then goes into the game so that makes it also quite easy to do. Uh, all of that helps a lot. The other thing as you can see here and this is again part of the design that I implemented to make it easier is that in the original game each of these items is not stored within the game data and the conveyor belts are uh, drawn but not defined so what I basically did was uh, put a little bit of code into the engine so that it reads the items records where they are then and then basically uh, removes them from the screen so that they're not part of the main um, screen and then they're basically put back on when the game runs if you see what I mean so that uh, they can be collected and the same thing applies to the um, to the conveyor belts and these are color coded as you can see this one is uh, lilac and this one is 
red and the reason I chose that within the design at least is red means right and lilac means left so it's easy to remember L for left and R for right when they go into the game they are all uh, the same color so that's just a design choice within within here to help to help us to remember how we are kind of uh, working on it and, and as, as I said that basically means that we don't have to faff about uh, figuring out where the items are and where the conveyors are we just put it all within the design and then the engine basically converts it into the data that's needed and that, that just makes the whole process a lot lot simpler so it wasn't that tricky to get the levels and as I said Richard was very helpful there basically copying the levels over from the Vic and doing the legwork for that and John has been helping with the placement of the enemies as well so that took a bit of the work away from me which was nice because I meant I could just get on with the kind of uh, engine room stored stuff getting the engine to work okay so that's how we did that just go through here show you a few more levels a few more issues one of the things that happens in the uh, original game is that you can something called the big toe effect where you can actually climb up the side of walls and I considered implementing it but to be honest with you it's it was a ha it was a real hassle and so in the end for example here in the original these were walls so you could kind of like big toe your way up like that uh, so I just replaced them with melting blocks and uh, that seems to have made the game work perfectly fine so as I said the idea really is to make the game fun and playable and challenging it isn't to recreate it absolutely perfectly because obviously if I wanted to do that I could have you know stretched the screen out or made the made the characters flicker or, or whatever I mean it wouldn't be realistic so we just wanted to make it that had the feeling of let's say Manic Minor but with the levels of Perils of Willy so that it felt like a kind of hybrid between the two which I think is probably the best approach and um, wherever possible I looked at the flow of the level tried to interpret what the ori original authors intended for the level and tried to make that possible within the scope of the uh, Manic Miner engine itself and so that's basically how that has been done and uh, yeah so I think that's probably it really for now to be honest this is just a bit of an ad-lib video I'm just rambling a little bit telling you about a few things just wanted to test out the um, microphone and test out a few other things the background music and so on we'll see how that turns out presumably if you're listening to this it uh, it turned out okay so uh, yeah I will uh, see you again soon I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you found it interesting uh, it's a bit of a niche thing, but uh, I know some of you enjoy this kind of in-depth uh, review and discussion. So, yeah, cheers. I will see you soon, and as always, happy coding. Bye-bye.